Two months, you have a one-year-old door or a two-year-old book. Can you remember everything about that book? Can you remember what was the, the, the weight of the book when it was weaned or how many kids have it produced over the, the, the space of time if you weren't keeping some kind of records? To say how many times the book has been serviced or the book has serviced the doors? Can you tell the age of the book and say maybe it's time to change the book? Are you noting that if the book has been there on the farm for quite a while, maybe some of these does that you kept back as replacement does, he's really breeding with his offsprings and you're actually weakening the genetics of your farm. So it is very important for us to write down things, record it, right? <laughs> because sometimes we will say that we're going to record something and we try to record it in a diary, but probably after the year finished, we throw down the diary, don't remember, or some people try to mark it on a calendar and you throw away the calendar. But now you actually have a book which you can record it. And you can print pages of it, you can give it to farmers, you're going to show them how to fill it out, right? And how they'll analyze the information. So we're making it so easy for you. Why keep records quickly? Because we're so bright and we're going to swift through these sections of it. Why we keep records? To make decisions. Make decisions, what else? And we keep records for what sometimes? Well, I don't know if it's profitable or not. Ah. Ah. Don't you keep records because you want to know if you're making money? It's not just about, yes, we keep information on the animal. Exactly, traceability of your animal, especially if you're recording health information, you can see what has been happening, right? For those persons like the vet who is going up for a loan to start her own farm, sometimes the banks want to make sure that you know what it is that you're doing before they invest their money. Now, if it is that you tell them, well, you know, especially if you have been in farming, and you say, yes, I've been in farming for five years and I have X amount of animals and stuff. And you can't produce one record book mm -hmm. to show them why should they invest mm -hmm. your money. What are you going to tell them? For real money, yes, it really prosperous. Yes, for real, you'll, you'll get back your money. You, you, you are your take a picture. Take a picture. <laughs> Not to say, because taking a picture is another form of recording, but it's also going to mean that you are consistently doing that and adding additional information to it. Because we do that sometimes, you know, especially when they talk about stealing of animals. Sometimes you can't take a picture because if they find the animal, they can't say, look, this is my animal and mm -hmm. some of these sorts of things. But that is not what you want to do as their permanent form of record keeping. That kind of complement your record keeping as well, right? So you do it for some persons, for some countries, you may have to pay taxes. So it is to show how many animals you have, what has been happening for taxes. For some countries, if you're going up for loans, the banks want to see that you are serious about it. You have been taking a business-like approach to it because they want back their money at the end of the day. So you can show them that, yes, you are alert and everything. Even if you're going up for the bank, they want to know. And if you tell them that you have a record book and you can produce that, they know that, yes, you are serious about it. And you have started the process of how you will be approaching your enterprise, right? You remember we were saying that um, dogs, that we spoke about dog predation and everything. So you have your animals and dogs attacked it and killed some of your animals. But you don't have any record of probably the weight of the animal or the stage of growth of the animal or the breed of the animal. How can you now get an analysis to say, this is the amount of money that I need to be compensated with for my animals if you weren't keeping some kind of records. And like she's saying, in a disaster, because we get it quite often as extension officers, when a disaster occurs, you have flooding and animals have drowned or burned up in fire and all this sort of stuff, and the farmer wants the government to compensate, and of course the government is going to try to, you know, assist the farmers, but how many animals did you have? What were the weight of them? You're going to have to take it from the farmer to say, well, yes, he's telling the truth. No, right? So these are some of the reasons why we keep records. So we just run through them quickly. History, we were talking about tracking what is happening on your farm, talking about how much it's costing you to produce your animals. Remember, we were saying, how will you know if it's a profitable business, yes or no? We're speaking about farmers who are doing it as a business, farmers who are in it to make money. And that's why I'm saying, if you're in it to make money, your approach 
So your farming enterprise is going to be different. Because if I'm in it to make money, I want to know how much money I'm spending, how much money I'm making back, which are my best animals. Because I, if I am trying to replace animals, I don't want to give away my best animals or sell my best animals. I want to keep the best animals for myself. Sure. Right? And how am I going to know if I'm not keeping records? Right? So we will find all different kinds of farmers. You can encourage a farmer to say, well, if you're really approaching it as a business, these are the things that you have to do and you can show. But we will always have some naysayers and we won't get around that, right? Identify animals that we say have issues. Suppose we have a doe on the farm and all the other does have been breeding, but this one just seemed to not be breeding. We may have to call that animal. But if we're not keeping record, we might not realize that that animal is not kidding or she only kid this year and it's for the next two years before she kid again, right? So, and of course, disease, to know the disease status of your animals and your farm, always important, right? Replacement animals, we spoke about that to say if we want to replace our animals, we want to keep the best animal and especially if you're breeders, you cannot be buying an animal. You say you want a 90% boar book. You go to the farm and the farmer says, yes, man, look at him and I can't see. It's a real thing. It's going to cost you 100,000 Jamaican dollars to buy that animal. Are you going to just take up $100,000 and buy that animal just because the farmer says it's the real thing? You can't tell just by looking. Right? Because remember, we spoke about performance of an animal. So therefore, you'd have had to be taking data on the animal until it reached a certain stage to say what kind of quality animal this is. Did it come from even a group of triplets or did it come from twin or it was just a single birth animal? All these different things we will show later on how it's going to impact when you're selecting an animal, right? So you see, even sometimes for research purposes, you keep information for your animals. Because if a researcher is going to come and tell you that no, you need to feed the animal in this fashion, they have to come with proof to you. Exactly, so they, they have the proof, they keep the records and they can show you that feeding the animal this way have resulted in this outcome, right? So it's very important that all of us keep records. So making decisions, production targets, very important. There is no farmer who should be starting any kind of farm without knowing what is his target. You have to know what are the different things that you're looking at? What is your reproduction efficiency? Right? It's just to say how many times your animals are going to be reproducing. What is your kid rearing efficiency? The value and weight of the weaned kid. They, we haven't put a weight and that's because, like we are saying, you have bigger breeds of goats and sheep and so therefore it's not a standard way to say this is what the weight should be. You try to keep it with that much as within a breed to say with, if this is a particular breed that you have, that is an, when we talk about the estimated progeny difference and all these sort of things, some of those will play into it, right? Kidding interval, eight months interval. So if you see you're running longer than that, you'll start thinking that maybe something is not right. You need to make some adjustments on your farm, right? And your mortality rate, very important. Yeah. If you see, and tenure I think is even too high. But if you think, if you see, well, Sometimes you have mortality rate on different stages. Sometimes what we have what you call pre-weaning mortality rate. Maybe a little bit higher, so maybe we'll say 10. But post-weaning mortality rate, you may say you put it at 5%. Right? So these are measures, these are markers that you're using to see if you're on target, if everything is going great. Right? And this is just basically saying that you will have the normal distribution in terms of performance of your animals. You'll have some that are not going to be at the high level of production. You'll have most of them is what you want to get around the mean section, that part of your graph where that loop is. And then you have some that are going to be super producers. So you're going to get those that are doing extremely well, some that are doing extremely poor. And of course, in general and average, that is what you're, you'll be looking for. Most of your animals will fall in that category, right? Making decisions in terms of kid rearing efficiency, right? And we're saying these are the number of kids reared per doe. Remember, we were speaking about the kids, the does have kids, but they're not reared to maturity. So you want to take note of that as well, right? And this is just basically explaining to you how would you be able to calculate that. And it's just the number of weaned kids 
over the number of breeding females times 100, and that you're doing for your herd. You can do it for an individual animal, or you can do it for the herd that you have. The average daily gain, that is what we're going to be looking at, especially when we're doing some of the calculations. And that is just the amount of weight the animal has gained for each day, given a particular period of time. So if you want to know how much weight your animal has been gaining, if you never took the birth weight, and you don't have the weaning weight, you won't be able to say how much weight your animal has gained. From it was born till you wean it, how much weight has it gained? And what is the difference between the weight gain of this one compared to the weight gain of another one? If you would never even had the birth weight. So you can't have one without the other. You can't just wait and say, okay, when I wean it, I wait. What is that telling you? I don't know how fast it grew from it was from it born till, till weaning without having the birth weight. So that is why when we're saying that we are measuring, remember we said that with the kid record, and you're measuring the birth weight, and you're measuring the weaning weight, that's because some of these calculations you'll be doing, right? Mm -hmm. Also, the mortality rate. That is when we say that you were talking about your health record, you will say how many kids died, or what treatments. These are what you put in your health record. Or sometimes persons call, have what they call the mortality record. So that record is just to say when animals have died. They record that in a special section, right? And mortality rate, of course, is just going to be the number of kids die prior to weaning over the number of kids born alive times 100. And you can have the pre, you can have, you can break it down, you know, you can have what you call your pre-weaning mortality rate. So therefore, these are the amount of kids that I had that were born, right? And this is the amount of kids, alive. exactly, that I still have alive up to weaning, right? So that is your pre-weaning mortality rate, and then you can have your mortality rate after. So if that is, after weaning, this is the amount of animals that I have. Up until market, do I still have the same amount of animals? Did I suffer losses? What, how, many, how much percentage did I lose from after weaning to when I'm reaching market weight? Right? So it's the same amount of, same kind of calculation, the number of animals that you had at the time of weaning, to the time of marketing, right? Times 100 and you get your mortality rate. And we're calculating mortality rate. But we're not just calculating mortality rate, you know. We're trying to show the farmer that in calculating your mortality rate, you can see either your economic losses or gains that you have made, depending on what your mortality rate was, right? <laughs>